All creatures great and small. Okay. All creatures great and small, the Lord God made them all. In uh, in the Bible, in the first chapter of the Bible, the very first chapter, um, God makes the animals. Uh, everything out there, God made. Now, for the dogs, in standard creation science ideas, there seems to be an original bunch of dogs from which all the different breeds descend. We know that people breed new strength, new types of dogs, so they make new breeds. They, they do it. People breed that. So in the DNA of the ultimate dogs, which were aboard the Ark, Noah's Ark, and um, all the DNA is there for whatever dogs are on the Ark, the DNA is in those dogs. The various kinds of dogs all descend from those original dogs. There were not as many breeds and types of dogs back in the day that there are now, obviously. So it descends from an original types. And I think there's a huge variety of animals out there these days, especially in insects and things. But if you go further back in their DNA, they all link back into a, a far smaller amount. People think there's too many animal types to fit on the ark. Well, there's original, I suppose, kinds, the biblical term, kinds, maybe a genus or some somewhere around there. But they descend back to the original kinds, which produced various genetic variations. It's all in the DNA. It's not evolution. It's already in the DNA. So um, in the beginning, Genesis 1, the first chapter of the Bible, God's talking about how he made all the animals. At the beginning, in the first six days, he made the heavens and the earth and the mankind on the sixth day. But all the animals were made a bit before that, and some earlier on the sixth day. And um, the Lord God made all the animals. Now, in Genesis 9, mankind, Noahide mankind, has been given permission to eat all the animals. We were supposed to drain the blood. That's the life of the creature. We can't eat an animal with its blood. It's supposed to drain the life. And generally, there, there might be a, an assumption that you cook the, cook the flesh. That might be an assumption from an unwritten assumption. It might be there. It might not be there, that unwritten assumption. It might not be. So there, there might have been traditions back then that the animals were normally cooked. Animal meat is possibly normally cooked. It could normally be cooked. That might might be an historical, unwritten assumption which we can make about the scriptures, or maybe we can't. I don't really know. I don't think we really have the records to know for sure. But my, I suppose, suggestion is that it's usually best to make sure your meat is cooked. But we uh, we can eat all kinds of animals. All of them are permitted to us. The certain animals which we probably really need to make sure we cook them, otherwise we can often get sick if we eat the meat of animals without cooking it. And there's a lot of discussion on that. So normally we probably cook the animals. Man can eat animals. I think there's a possibility that these carnivore teeth we have, these uh, these ones, these canines as they call them, we're possibly omnivores in reality. There's, there's gut chemistry in the gut for digesting meat, which is possibly supposed to do that job. I think we might really be omnivores. Uh, human beings might really be omnivores in the ultimate way God intended for us to be. But we're not really, we shouldn't really be going around abusing animals. You know, it's it's uh, the RSPCA, I think, the Royal Society for the, for the Protection of protection from cruelty to animals we shouldn't really abuse god's creatures you know just because we can kill them and eat them for food it doesn't mean we've got a right to sort of harass them and and you know molest them and treat them poorly we should treat our animals well enough they're creatures with a living being about them they have minds and personalities they think and they feel like us so it doesn't mean we've got a right to sort of abuse animals. We shouldn't be doing that.
Just because we can slaughter them for food doesn't mean we should abuse them. They've got a right to their life somewhat like us. But animals are wonderful things. They're full of colours and varieties and types. They creep, they crawl, they swim, they fly. They mate. They do the kinds of things which humans do as well. They, you know, they, they eat and mate and sleep and they wander around and they, they live their lives. And the truth is that God made the animals. Not evolution, which is fairy tale for adults.